What is up, guys? Random Odium here. We're going to be watching Game 2 of SKT versus Rocks Tigers. Uh, SKT was able to win the first game, and now they've swapped sides. Uh, so now SKT will be on blue side, Rocks Tigers will be on red side. And I would expect Rocks Tigers to ban away the Nidalee for sure. And then, yeah, probably the Syndra and the Rise as well. You can't put Faker on either of those two champions. Um, SKT is going for the Aurelian Soul, the Jace, and last ban is Jin. Okay, that's very interesting. Uh, I understand the Aurelian Soul and the Jace. The Jin is kind of interesting. I guess they they figure that um, because the Caitlyn didn't work out, then Rox Tigers is going to go to the Jin instead. So that's interesting. Uh, SKT prioritizing the Olaf yet again. Um, that's interesting. I guess they, they figured that Peanut is, you know, obviously just so good that they need to first pick their jungler to put blank on somebody. Actually, it was uh, Bangy last time. Um, so, yeah, I guess they're just, you know, they feel like they need to win that jungle matchup. So they put uh, their jungler on somebody that uh, they feel really comfortable with. And then Rox Tigers is going for the Karma Ash bot lane. Okay, that's definitely a very strong bot lane. You get the Ash initiation. Uh, Karma's is a really strong laner in general. Good Ash poke, though it definitely got nerfed recently. And SKT responds with the Zyra Ezreal bot lane. So uh, Rox will have the advantage early in, the, um, in that matchup. But Ezreal just gets so hard to deal with in the late game. Um, so it looks like that they're willing to have kind of a little bit of a losing lane in bot lane. Um, but they want that scaling. Rox Tigers picks up the Rumble and the Lee Sin. Okay, I really like this. I like that they're putting Smeb on the Rumble. Putting him on a carry. I like that they're putting Peanut and Lee Sin because he's just a mechanical god. That's what you need to be in order to play Lee Sin well. Um, so yeah, I like this from Rocks Tigers. This is definitely a pretty solid team comp so far. Um, great counter by SKT. I really like how SKT is countering Rocks very well. The um, Echo plays very well into the Rumble. And then they put Faker on the Victor. And oh my goodness. What the hell is going on? They they last picked the the Misfortune. Whoa. They went for a support MF? Are you kidding me? Wow, this is really interesting. Double eighty carry bot lane. I don't think we've ever seen this on the in the world championships before. Oh my goodness, I'm actually really excited now. This is really interesting. We've never seen this before. We've never seen a double ADC comp in the bot lane. Usually if you run double ADCs, you run the mid and ADC, or you run them top and ADC. We've never seen support and ADC marksmen. So, uh, yeah, that's going to be really interesting. So that's going to be pushing bot lane. Um, Karma should be able to actually push in the victor until he gets his Hextech upgrade. And then Rumble will automatically push as well. So what they're looking for right now is they're looking for pushing lanes so that way that Peanut can invade. They're really looking for the invade for Peanut so that he can get into the jungle and try to punish this Olaf and not let him farm and get an early advantage. Force is the early flash from Wolf. So Misfortune went make it rain first, the E. That doesn't it doesn't do that much damage. It's just mainly utility with the slow and you get the Thunderlord proc, so it looks like Gorilla's running Thunderlord on the misfortune that's like an, that's a very old strategy from um 
like the beginning of the season. So you would run Thunderlord on Misfortune. You would max E first, and you would um, just proc that Thunderlord over and over and over again, and you would you know just poke people out. And that's actually what caused Misfortune for E to get nerfed a little bit. And it looks like Ash went for Thunderlord or went for um, Warlord's Bloodlust as well. So she went for extra sustain rather than the fervor. And they spot Olaf at the red. Good. It forced the um so uh Olaf uses ghost and he didn't get anything for it. Now Penis coming up in the top lane. Oh this is perfect. Well done. That was really well done by Peanut. I was very curious as to why he did that pathing. He cleared three camps, and then he went top lane. Yeah, well done. That was very well done by Rock's Tigers. I'm very curious to see what they're going to do with this bot lane. The other thing that this bot lane enables them to do is it enables them to kill Zyra plants very quickly. I'm actually also really curious to see what um, what Gorilla builds on Misfortune, if he's going to go for that shredding build that we normally see on Misfortune. Good flash. Good respectful flash. And yeah, I'd expect Smeb to start really trying to punish this lane now. This is a much better start for uh, Rocks Tigers. Yes, yeah, so they can instantaneously kill off the the Zyra plants. Ooh, flash forward from Faker gets a solo kill. Wow. Oh. Great, wow, these are some really great plays. Whoa, but Olaf's going to clean up now. Wow, so SKT made some great plays. They got the solo kill, they got the kill on the peanut, but then we got the uh, the teleports coming in from Rock Tigers. They go for the play. They do this really huge dive. I don't know why they did why they did it like this rather than just walk around the turret. They had that pink ward there. They knew that nobody was coming, but they made it work. Let's see. So, Gorilla is maxing Make It Rain first. Okay, that's interesting. So if they land Ash ult into Misfortune ult, that's, that's pretty much a guaranteed kill. Onto either the Zyra or the Ezreal. Peanuts on top of a ward. Great ward. Yep. Yep. There we go. Exactly what I was talking about. Ash arrow to end misfortune ult. Guaranteed kill. And you just wait. You just reset. Do it again. Reset. Do it again. 
This is a this is a dirty bot lane. This is a really dirty bot lane. And they might actually get first. Nah, I guess they won't get first tower off of it. They could have possibly gotten Drake, maybe. <laughs> but even that would have been risky. So you can see Faker is trying to outscale the the Karma already. This is this is the disadvantage, right? So you've got you know Smeb in top lane on his Rumble, which is definitely a very favorable lane for for Rocks. You've got this really killer bot lane, but your mid lane against Faker is is going to be in it for a world of hurt. So Kuro's just got to play really really safe and um, yeah, not die anymore. Have no more solo kills. And Ezreal has no kill pressure right now. He's got a freaking tear, and he's got a coal, and a pickaxe compared to the BF sword and uh, long sword of the Ash. I don't know. I'm just so, I'm just so freaking pumped that Misfortune is in the semifinals of Worlds as a support. Because I don't know if you guys know, but like Misfortune is probably my most played champion uh, and ranked, and I usually play her AD carry. Oh, very smart by Smep. He knows that the, the chance of him getting ganked is, is very real. So he uses his ultimate to clear the wave. Now they can't get the tower. Now Peanut's free to roam down to bot lane. They want to make a play bot lane, force them off. Ash Arrow misses, but they should be able to get the first blood on tower. Ooh, well done. Double TP. Yep, got it. Now rotate to Dragon. Oh, they're going to keep rushing it. Okay, so they're going to go for Inner instead. Now they got it back. They won't get Drake probably off of this. They might lose mid tower for this they shouldn't lose top tower but they're losing a lot of farm i'm not sure if that was worth it so it's a 2k gold difference right now i don't know why they sent the rumble to um the to top lane I don't know. Why not send the Rumble to bot lane and send Misfortune to top lane and the Ash to top lane? Yes, yeah, so they, they rotate the Karma to bot lane so she catches the wave. Ooh, well done. Forces the flash. All right, Subpoena's so going for it. They should be able to get this. Oh, it is warded though. TP coming in. They get the dragon. Wow, well done by Smeb. Oh my goodness. Okay, that's mid tower at least. At least mid tower. All right, so they got now they've got another tower down. Now they want to be rotating the top lane and try and take that. Cause there's nothing on the bot side of the map that they can take anymore. They've gotten both of the towers from bot lane. They got the dragon. So, yeah. Now you need to start pushing in your vision, rotating the top lane, trying to set up a dive in top lane. <laughs> now 
and you can see that SKT is already realizing that's the play. So they're trying to get their vision down. They got the scuttle crab. They're putting down vision uh, around the red buff. Yeah. SKT realized what the play is. So I would expect to see Kuro is going to push out this wave. And then he's going to start rotating mid. And then um, Ash and... Oh. oh, wow. Okay. So... I don't think they're gonna get mid lane. They should go in top lane right now. There we go. Rotate the top lane. Get the top lane tower. They might be able to get the kill on Duke. Duke might go down. Yeah. I don't understand why he went in. He didn't have his ult up. Yeah, there's no reason why to go to go for that. I don't know what Peanut's doing. Alright, so now you hard push mid lane. And yeah, reset. Good call. Mountain Drake up in 130. So, Rox is in a pretty commanding lead right now. <laughs> yeah, so they're already... Hmm. It looks like they're, they're trying to play around Drake. Once Drake's off the table, I expect them to be rotating up to try and just deny vision around bear control. So that way, if they get a pick, they can rotate to bear and pretty much immediately. Yep. See, even even Faker sometimes fails his flash. So, you guys out there, I know everybody fails their flash. I fail my flash all the time. Um, everybody makes mistakes, so don't flame your teammates when they make mistakes. Because even Faker makes mistakes from time to time, okay? So, be positive, support your team. Don't freaking spam ping question marks whenever they fail a flash or something like that. Just laugh about it. It happens, right? It happens. So I'm sure SKT is giving him all sorts of shit right now. I like these Ash arrows. I really like these arrows from Prey. He's just going for it. Yeah, this is really important for SKT to just maintain control. Because if they lose control of the Baron Pit, the game's pretty much over. <sighs> yep, they started denying that vision. They just swept it. Now you just wait a little bit. <sighs> oh, they let them get some wards in again. That's not good. They need to. They need to get that scuttle crab. Yeah, if SKT is able to get that scuttle crab, that allows them to stall a little bit longer. So, let's look at what Gorilla is building. So he went for the the Sightstone item that is built off of the, the Spell Thief's Edge. That's interesting. And then he went for Mortal Reminder. 
Why do you go for Mortal Reminder? That's a really weird build. Because, I mean, it's not like SKT has a lot of healing on their team. I guess he's just doing it for the utility. This is great. He keep forcing the face check, face check, face check, and then if they overextend a little bit, then you get the pick and you get the Baron. Wow, well done by Faker. Look at that blue buff. Kuro's way caught out. Why was why did Duke teleport though? That was a he, that was actually a really bad misplay because they didn't need to have him teleport. And Kuro going down is actually really huge because it means that they lose all Baron control right now. Oh, well done. Oh. This is just this. Fe this feels really sloppy. It feels really forced right now by um, rocks. I think th they understand that they need to pressure their advantage, but this feels really forced. Huh? Huh? Penis got it. Duke's going in. I think they're out. Oh, except for Prey got stuck in the gravity field. Did Prey not have his flash? Yeah, oh, that was a mistake. Yeah, Prey burned his flash a little bit too soon, and that made it, made it so that Faker could just, dro just drop the gravity field, and he got the guaranteed stun. Fascinating, just like these little tiny misplays here and there is the difference between these two teams. They they are playing at such a high level. I don't know what Faker's doing way out here. This actually might cost them the inhib. Faker's way out of position. Yep. So the reason why that inhib f fell was because Faker was pushing bot lane. He was all the way out by like the outer turret for SKT. Uh, I didn't like that ult. Man might be dead. Wow, really well done by SKT. <sighs> Just a little bit of an overstay from Rox Tigers, all right? Because I was looking at the death timers, and Bang was at like five seconds. Yeah, one, zero, Bang's up. As soon as he's up, SKT goes in hard. So that's why you have to respect the death timers in your games. If you don't respect them, you're going to get punished for it. Especially if it's a competent team like SKT. I mean, they're the best players in the world. You have to, un you have to respect their ability to punish you. Yeah, 
Mm, I don't know how I feel about Gorilla being here. I don't know how I feel about Peanut being here. I don't. Oh, good dodge. Oh, can he get out? Wow. Look at friggin' top lane, though. Rock Tigers gets the inhib. They're pushing on the Nexus turrets. He blocks the teleport, too. This might be the game right here. Wow. Wow. This this was probably the most unconventional game I've seen in a really long time. Like completely breaking the meta, completely doing like crazy stuff. Like I had no idea why Peanut was going for red buff with Gorilla. It just didn't make any sense. Like they were just way out of position, but it was all a freaking diversion for freaking the Ash to get the top inhib. And then the Ash Arrow fired. They knew where uh, Echo was, and he was trying to teleport. They stopped his teleport, and they get the Nexus Towers. Oh my god, that was just... That was a whole different level of, of play. Like, completely against the meta, completely against the grain. I absolutely loved it. I hope you guys did too. If you did, please give it a thumbs up. If you like the content on the channel, please subscribe. And uh, yeah, leave your comments below. This was this was an amazing game. If this is how this, the rest of the World Championships is going to be, I am I am completely pumped. I am so excited for the rest of this. So I hope you all have a great day. This is Ramonim signing off.